Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and tonight is a little bit of a different type of broadcast. Um, there, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, things, things people have been sharing with us uh, that are being said um, that's happening out there. And I know that uh, my good friend, uh, Brother Paul Begley, has mentioned uh, the Noahide laws, things like that, and really majorly downplayed those. Uh, I am gonna, I am gonna deal with that uh, publicly. Uh, I, I've been, I've talked to Brother Paul about this before privately, and was really wanting to go and see him, um, talk to him in depth, and maybe we can still do that about how serious these things are. But uh, this, that's not what I'm doing tonight. I, I will address a little bit of this tonight, but not directly as of yet uh, from what was shared with me. I got a lot of emails from you guys about that. A lot of people were concerned, and so I appreciate that. I appreciate you, you know, and, and, and let me just say this. Pray for Brother Paul, Sister Heidi. We, we do love them dearly. Um, but I wanted to share some things here with you because there's a lot of things that people do not realize that are never told to you. Uh, I have been now studying for two days very much in depth. I have, if you can see my desk uh, just below the camera, I've got a stack of Talmudic Zohar Mishnah books laying out right now. And I can tell you for a fact, you have to understand, I spent over 20 years in the Chabad organization. I know the behind the scenes. You know, most Christians that have Jews, especially Orthodox Jews for friends, uh, they think that they're telling them the truth when they say things about Noahide laws or, or things like that, or, oh, we don't really believe this. They're not going to tell you the truth. All right? You got to remember, you as a Gentile are considered a dog. So basically, they're just going to give you the toilet water. That's all you're going to get. They may share some things in there with you that they feel like will be of a benefit. But you have to understand, they're permitted to lie to you. And once a year, we can shake off all those lies through a certain particular holiday that we have. And God forgives everything. We don't have to worry about it. We go right back around and do it all over again. I'm not here to lie to you. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. I have fully embraced him and I am, I am on the side of, of our Lord. And I'm not going to lie to you. All right. But I wanted, I, there was a couple little key points here I wanted to bring out because I also saw something here in Daniel chapter 11 I'm going to go to in just a little bit. Uh, just a different take on Daniel 11. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk a little bit about Nibiru. Uh, the, the solar system planetary thing coming up. This is from a 2017 article that I have here up on the screen right now for you. Going to talk about that as well. And because uh, there is a lot going on with that. And uh, I know that we have John Moore going to be coming here on uh, next Saturday, February the 8th, for our conference here in Orlando. John's going to be talking about Nibiru. He's going to be talking about pole shifts. Going to be talking about how it's going to change everything here. Uh, I will mention as well, because I have a friend with, that was uh, formerly with NASA, uh, excuse me, not with NASA, but with uh, the NSA, also uh, in the Pentagon now, knows very much detail what the U.S. government is anticipating, and they're looking at a major meteorite uh, belt that we're going to be going through in the not-so-distant future. Uh, so there's a lot of things out there, a lot of concerns people have. So I will ad address this a little bit as well at this coming conference. John will be going deeper into it. Uh, I'm really debating, you know, I, I know I was talking about doing Gog of Magog, and I don't know if I'm going to go with Gog of Magog War or if I'm going to uh, deal more with some of these other issues as well. Just, just hard to say. It's hard to say. So I, you pray for me uh, and, and pray for our friends as well. Like I said, pray for Brother Paul, Sister Heidi, because we do love them and we would love to see them to really know what the truth of this is and not the half truth that gets told to them from the other side. So, but on this one right here, one thing that brought to my mind is when I was looking at this, I noticed that this article here is quoting from the Zohar. And I have the Zohar right here on the shelf and behind you here, the entire Encyclopedia Britannica set of it. By the way, there's two Zohars. And you may not know that, but there are two Zohars. 
Uh, there is one that you can kind of get a hold of, but then there's one that only the Jewish people kind of have a hold of, you know. Uh, that's something that's kind of just like the Talmud, you know, I have one here. This is a Sansino Talmud uh, And and this one here I was in the uh, Gitin part of it or uh, was I in the Kiddushin? I think it's a Gitin. Yeah, this is yeah I was yeah, I was in the Gitin right here and uh, Just to give you an idea. I was reading here. He asked him who is who is repute in the other world? They replied Israel about Joining them, they replied, seek their welfare, seek not their harm. Whoever touches them touches the apple of his eye. He said, what is your punishment? They replied, with boiling hot excrement, since Master has said, whoever mocks the words of the sages is punished with boiling hot ex uh, excrement. Uh, and of course, they're talking about your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is, I, I actually use a Sensino Talmud. That's one of the best versions you could ever have if you ever had anything like that. But anyway, I was looking up a lot of different issues in there. And so I'll be sharing those things with you here in the very coming days. But as I was sitting here uh, looking at the Zohar and looking at this here, NASA discovers seventh planet system conforms exactly to the Zohar's description of pre-Messiah Nibiru. I thought to myself, what, what should we really... Should I do like a lot of these rabbis do? They go out there and they only tell you part of the truth. They give you the toilet water and, you know, as a little dog, you can lap it up and that's all you get, right? No, no. Listen, you're our friends. We love you and you need to know the truth. But let's first look a little bit about what's quoted in here. All right, because I don't think these rabbis, and I know they're not. I shouldn't say I don't think. I know they're not. They're instructed not to tell you. All right, but let's look at what it says here. Last week, NASA announced the discovery of a relatively close star system, but according to one opinion, the discovery comes 2,000 years after it was first descri described in detail by a classic Jewish text, necessarily element preceding the Messiah. All right, it says NASA research revealed seven planets orbiting a dwarf star called Trappist-1, a roughly 8% the size of the sun and located 39 light years away from the earth. Four of its seven planets are similar in size and mass to the earth. And there are in what scientists believe is a habitable zone. All right. Those are kind of key words that people that know what's written in the Zohar. That's a key word for them. All right. I don't say much about that right now. Anyway, if you go on down here, uh, 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 they, they're quoting Rabbi Ovadiah here. He says, The Zohar, the foundational work of Jewish mysticism, predicted the appearance of a star with seven stars orbiting it, right? Now, he's going to quote from the Zohar, but he's never going to tell you everything the Zohar says about this. After 40 days, when the pillar rises from the earth to heaven in the eyes of the whole world and the Messiah has appeared, a star will rise up on the east, blazing in all the colors. Seven other stars will surround that star star and they will wage war on it. Hmm. Jewish, Jewish sources say that this astrological phenomena is necessary part of the Gula. Gula means redemption, of course. All right. Now, that's pretty much the sum of what you're going to get in here. All right. They're not going to tell you really anything else that the Zohar has to say about it. That's just to kind of get you excited. You know, drink a little toilet water. And guess what? Then you will fall for this being an amazing prophecy. And wow, it's coming to pass. But what you don't know is when... I'm going to blow this up so you can see this. About the coming of the Messiah here. This here is part of what is written in uh, the Zohar. All right. There are five things that are supposed to happen. This is one reason why I want to get into Daniel a little bit, the king of the north, the king of the south. And I'm going to look at this from a little bit different perspective. All right. A little bit of different perspective on Daniel 11. Uh, as I've told you before, I believe that the king of the north represented, uh, actually, I spoke to you about it being NATO, uh, the NATO alliance. But at that time, I still look more towards the idea of the Vatican being the one that ran that. But I'm beginning to wonder if Trump is not going to be that guy. 
you'll see in a little bit here. Let's look at those reasons for uh, the, or the five things that are supposed to happen at the coming of the Messiah. Let me first read to you what I have in green here. All right, for the calculation we have in another place, the exact year of the Messiah's advent, when 60 years shall have elapsed after sixth century of the sixth millennial, it is said that the heavens shall visit the daughter of Jacob in the 70th year, the King Messiah shall be revealed in the province of Galilee. Yeah, you know, it's almost like what these guys were up to was uh, they were trying to copy the, uh, how the, the, the star came, appeared, uh, the child would be born in Bethlehem. Christ taught up and around Galilee area. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of interesting, you know, because you got to keep in mind, the Zohar was uh, written, actually, uh, from my opinion, it was actually written after the time of Christ. But anyway, uh, so it says, one of the first things they're going to have is the rainbow will shine with very brilliant dyes like a betrothed lady adorning him, herself to enter into the presence of her spouse. Okay? Second thing, a star will appear in the east and swallow up seven stars at the north. All right. Presumably, after a period, a fixed star will appear in the middle of the firmament and will be visible for 70 days. It will have 70 rays and will be surrounded by 70 other stars. Whoa. I'm sorry, we didn't get that part when we read this, uh, when the, when, and, and believe me, there's many rabbis and scholars that go, they, they're willing to tell you about the seven stars that, uh, that, that accompany the one, but they don't tell you about the 70 other stars that are to appear with it. So we actually have 77 with one. Hmm. You know, it's interesting how if you want to make something kind of fit what you think is coming, it's easy just to kind of work it around that. Anyway, number four, the city of Rome will fall to pieces and intimidation, uh, intimation, which should be a moment of the hot gospel of certain Protestant Second Advent preachers whose vestiges remain among us. A great king will arise up and will conquer the world. There will be war against Israel, but the chosen people shall be delivered. According to the one account, the 70 celestial chiefs who rule the 70 nations of the earth will marshal all the legions of the world to make war on the sacred city of Jerusalem, but they will be exterminated by the power of the Holy One. It is written, and the house of Jacob shall, you know, and they're quoting the scripture on that, right? And I didn't put that in there. It's another page in this, but I wanted you to be able to see this. One about the great king will rise up and will conquer the world. Hmm. Great king's going to rise up and conquer the world. And of course, the 70 stars, not just the seven stars, but there's 70 stars that go with it. Right? So like I said, you're not being told everything. Now, that's not the only thing you're not being told. I already told you. And we've, we've been sharing with you over and over and over about the Noahide laws, how serious the Noahide laws are. Let me remind you of this right here, right? This is right off Chabad, uh, Chabad.org's website, okay? Right off Chabad.org's website. And by the way, the Chabad.org is only one of the Orthodox groups that believe in these things. There's more that believe on, because you got to understand, most all, most all Jews, including Reformed Jews, believe Talmud, all right? They believe in the Talmud. They believe in, uh, not everybody believe, necessarily ascribes to the Zohar, but they believe Talmud, they believe Mishnah, they believe all these books. All right? This one here says, although our sages declared, uh, kill even the best of the Gentiles, and that is mentioned above the Rambam states in Halachot Melachim 8.10, that any Gentile who does not accept the seven universal laws commanded to Noah, his descendants, okay, you don't accept the seven universal law of Noah and uh, the commandment of, uh, excuse me, laws commanded to, his, to Noah and his descendants should be slain. You should be killed, right? These directives, however, can be interpreted to apply only in a time of war or in time when the Jews have control over the Gentiles. So when we're having the president, and look, this is no slam on President Trump. You had uh, Bush, you had Clinton, you had Obama, you had uh, Bush, second Bush, you also, and you have Trump, 
All these presidents had signed these every year they were in office. Well, some people like to say, well, they're just no different than the ice cream, National Ice Cream Day. Yeah, but the Jews publicly slay, say they slipped it in on the Americans. All right? So, so if they get control, you can count on it. You're, you know, there's going to be coming this death, right? Well, is there, is there a Zohar prophecy that speaks about them getting that control? Well, it just so happens to be in the very Zohar prophecy that you read about the coming of the seven planets around the one and the 70, of course, that they didn't tell you about, right? The Nibiru. And this is very much believed amongst Orthodox Jews there. Uh, and by the way, they consider the Messiah, Messiah as Shekinah incarnate. Oh my God, how this is terrible. Anyway, according to the Midrash, Talpigoth, the Messiah will bring eternal peace, which of course was understood by the Israelites as peace for Israel, plus that which may be follow extermination for all who do not enter by conversion unto the house of Jacob. In other words, if you do not keep the Noahide laws, the Messiah coming follows a mass extermination. Okay? does not say it's by beheading and don't play the game that it's not prophetic it's very prophetic revelation says he saw those that were beheaded for the testimony that they held not only does it say that there it also says Jesus himself said they will bring they will bring you up into the synagogues he didn't say the churches he didn't say the uh, the mosque he said the synagogues. Guess you forget those things. Conversion at Messianic period will be apparently on a great scale because all the nations of the world will gather about the King Messiah when he shall be manifested, seeing that these words of the scripture must be fulfilled. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people to it shall the Gentiles seek. Oh, this is just like taking the Gospels that were written about Jesus Christ and throwing them all to the garbage. Because the Zohar applies the Gentile seeking to some future Messiah that's coming when Nibiru is coming through and when they're going to wipe out all the people on the earth that doesn't, don't adhere to the seven Noahide laws. Yeah, that's about the sum of it. You think it's a joke? It's not a joke, friends. It's very serious. Very serious what's coming. All right? But, and, and like I said, they tell you right there, they're going, uh, this, gonna fall, the, the, this is going to follow an extermination of, for all who did not enter by, by conversion to the house of Jacob. We're coming to a very, very, very serious time. All right, let's move forward with some of this. Now, this is interesting because here you have, uh, um, what was this article here about? There was one point I wanted to bring up out of this article here. This is, uh, yeah, let's see. Jewish prophecy will Nova KIC 983227 in 2022 herald the arrival of the Messiah. Again, same, same type of article there, right? Now, an ultra-Orthodox Jewish rabbi says it will herald the coming of their long-awaited Messiah, and Donald Trump is a harbinger of doom. All right? He's, they consider him the harbinger of doom. At the heart of the matter is KIC 9832227, a dull star in the constellation of uh, Kyganus. Right? That's why I'm wondering if, they, if they're going to have Trump do all the dirty work and bring about this war that's going to bring about a huge extermination on the earth. The, the Mayan calendar predicted Bolton. Okay, they go into all that. Not, that's wasn't, I didn't want to bring into that right now. Uh, now, a Jewish rabbi says the same thing about it to happen again or for the first time, depending upon your faith. Controversial ultra rabbi Yosef Berger has been awaiting the coming of his religion's Messiah all his life. He is a rabbi overseeing one of Judaism's most holy sites, the tomb of King David on Mount Zion in Jerusalem, the old city. All right. Um, let's see. 
All right, and again, what do they do? They quote only part of Zohar. I see it, but not now. I behold him, but not near. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's the scripture that, uh, or something. I forget now. Hang on. Um, let's see. We have also a more sure word of prize where until you dwell to take heed unto the light of the shineth in dark place and day. Yeah, all right. Here it's interesting. They they here prophetic prophetic noble like stars are not restricted to the Torah. The Christian New Testament book, Second Peter one nineteen states, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, we were unto you do do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place unto the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Okay. Now they they're interpreting Second Peter's words to be that this Nibiru planet is coming in, but the day star was to come into your heart. But there again, you have to know Zoharic teaching. Zoharic teaching also talks about how the He and the Vav are going to unite together. And you want to talk about mystic beliefs and every kind of ungodly thing. It's not the Holy Spirit, friends, coming in that came in on the day of Pentecost. You can have the day star in your heart, which is the Holy Spirit, right now. But in case you didn't get the rest of the toilet water, I'm going to give it to you. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify of you these things. In the churches, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. All right, so they're still trying to type these things. But I wanted to show there was something else I wanted to show you here, and I got to get back down to it. Um, let's see here. Yeah, here it is right here. In order to establish his kingdom, God had to create confusion, a situation in which the best plans laid by the most powerful people comes to nothing. Trump's role as a herald of the Messiah is also embraced by members of Israel's parliament, the Knesset. Okay, I hope that he will ascend the Temple Mount and from the source of light and energy in the world lead us in a dialogue of peace and reconciliation. This was quoted by Rabbi Yehuda Glick, leading figure in the Temple Mount movement. All right. So what do you think Glick thinks of him? Right. They're already calling him King Messiah or the king of Israel, like Wayne Allen Root. And Donald Trump, President Trump, quoting this guy here, I'm going to play this for you, what he says here about President Trump. Listen to this. They will not see it. They will not listen. They don't want to hear it. Right. I've got friends that vote Democrat because their mother told them to 50 years ago. And I'm like... By the way, Wayne is a... Um, while well, we're waiting on him to get to this point here, Wayne is uh, a professed Jewish man that has uh, converted to Christianity. All right, and but he is very uh, strong Trump supporter, and he is going to talk about Trump being the uh, the like the like the king of Israel. Doesn't say he's a king of Israel, but like the king of Israel and a godlike figure. Don't forget, I don't know if you haven't watched the show. I happen to be Jewish by birth. And 75% of all Jews vote Democrat. And they don't like Trump. And this is the greatest president for Jews and for Israel in the history of the world. Not just America. Trump's the best president for Israel in the history of the world. And the Jewish people love him like he is the king of Israel. They love him like he is the second coming of God. And in America, American Jews don't like him. They, they don't even know what they're doing or saying anymore. It makes no sense. All right, so he says that the president is like the king of the Israel, like the second coming of God. President Trump says, thank you to Wayne Allen Root for the very nice words. President Trump is the greatest president for Jews in Israel in the history of the world, not just America. He is the best president for Israel in the history of the, uh, of the world. And the Jewish people in Israel love him. All right. So, but, you know, Parnas also was saying that, uh, that he had the, you know, based on Gematria, that his, uh, his name added up to that of the Messiah. Right. So interesting, right? Anyway, um, let me jump back to the Noahide laws, though, because like I said, we're going to get onto this issue with Trump here in just a second. But one other thing, when people say the Noahide laws are not, they don't matter, small percentage believe in it. I'm working on the percentage total for you of Judaism believe in it. And believe me, it's a lot more than what you could ever imagine because most all Jews believe in the Talmud. In fact, the Talmud, for any Orthodox Jew, and for many of the Reformed Jews, the Talmud is more authority than the Torah itself. That's a fact. And I'll prove, in fact, all you got to do, look, look, Nehemiah Gordon will tell you that. 
he'll take because Nehemiah was an Orthodox Jew. He knows exactly the way it is. And the Talmud is believed to be of more authority and that the rabbis sit in Moses' seat and they have replaced God. They replace Moses and God does not have any say in what goes on here on the earth, right? But anyway, let me show you. You want to talk about how the Noahide, Noahide laws are a major issue. This here is on Israel's chief rabbi, non-Jews should not live in the land of Israel, right? He's already saying non-Jews should not live in the land of Israel. Okay, that's the chief rabbi of Israel. Gentiles, right? Okay, well, watch what else he says here. Non-Jews should not live in the land of Israel unless they accept the seven Noahide laws. Israel's Sephardic chief rabbi said. All right, now I know some people may not believe what I just read, so let me get it as big as we can. I want to make sure you guys can really see this on the screen. Don't want nobody to be confused about this. All right, so there it is. No Jew should, non-Jews should not live in the land of Israel unless they accept the seven Noahide laws Israel's Sephardic chief rabbi said. The main promoters of the Noahide laws, all right, uh, are, and by the way, by the way, when I was in Israel, last time I was there, and uh, I don't know if it's the last time I was there, but I remember uh, Brother Paul was with me there. We went into the tomb of David. Yana saw in the tomb of David, where they had the sign there, uh, encouraging the Gentiles to keep the seven Noahide laws. Just today, Sister Laurel Austin, who we've had on here uh, before on Israeli News Live, her children being uh, the ones that had suffered the autism, she was in a mall with her daughter recently, in, I believe that's in Kansas, and while at a booth there where they sell uh, facial creams and things like that, they invited her into the office there. And when they did, an Orthodox rabbi comes to them, hands her a card, which she sent us a picture of the card. I don't have it with me yet to show it, but I will. Uh, and was trying to get her to embrace the seven Noahide laws as a Gentile. And I'm getting reports like that on a regular basis. People email me, telling me about these things that are happening. Uh, the Chabad organization is major about promoting the seven Noahide laws. In fact, right here on their website are the seven Noahide laws spelled out. And you got to understand the seven Noahide laws as they're listed right here. You're not seeing the hundreds of sub laws that go with it as well. But just to show you right, right there, and I'll blow it up a little bigger for you so you can see that one too, right? Idolatry prohibits the worship of any human or any created thing. So if you worship Jesus Christ as the Son of God, as many of the people did when he was here on the earth, you're guilty of idolatry. That's punishable by death. All right? Just as I showed you a moment ago. Uh, no, actually, I don't think I have that one up here. That was in another video I did that in. I apologize. Anyway, let's go on to move into some other things here that I wanted to share with you, though, before it gets too late here. And I thought I had, Dan here's Daniel right here. As I mentioned to you, President Donald Trump, uh, they consider him to be like the king of Israel, right? And I began to think to myself, could it be? I've already sh shared with you guys how, like, for example, in uh, Daniel eleven thirty nine, 39, and he shall deal with the strongest fortress with the help of a fort. Wait, 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 not that one there. Hang on. Let me get the right verse here. Okay, yeah, verse 40, for example, where they mistranslate that. At the time of the end, he shall, shall, at the time of the end, shall the king of the south push at him. It doesn't say push at him. It says emo, with him, right? All right, the, he, the king of the south pushes with him, okay? And what's important about knowing that is that with him there, uh, and of course, I said the king of the north shall come not against him, but Aliyav Melech Hatzifon, okay? He comes over him or upon him with many horses and chariots, and he enters into these lands, right? 
and, and, and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow as he passes through. Those of you that have been listening to Israeli News Live long enough, you know as I talked about this, I've shown you guys over and over and over how that this prophecy here is a war that the NATO forces helping Israel are conquering the entire Middle East. All right? Now, I never really, you know, when we looked at the King of the North, I think, okay, well, is it, could it be the Pope of the Rome? Because the Pope of Rome calls all the shots, right? But we never had this situation to where the Israelis were calling the President of the United States the King, King of Israel. All right? Now, granted, probably the largest concentration of Jews are in the United States of America. And the United States of America is north of Israel. All right, so let's just say this from a conjecture point of view, not as a prophetic point of view, just as a thought, and look at the scripture now. If we put Donald Trump as that king of the north, look at how the scripture says, but in his place shall he honor the God of strongholds. This is the king of the north, by the way. And a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver. That's one reason why I look at this as being the Pope of Rome. All right. But Donald Trump's all about the money. So you could have both guys like twins on this issue. And with precious stones and costly things. And he shall deal with the strongest fortress with the help of a foreign god. Whom he shall acknowledge and shall increase glory. I want to tell you something. Jesus said about the Pharisees of his day that their father was the devil. In fact, Jesus said that all the blood that was ever spilled, all the way back to righteous Abel and the prophets, etc., he placed it all on the Pharisees. Why did he place it on the Pharisees? Because the Pharisees didn't exist at one time. It's because they were part of a Nephilim bloodline. They were part of a reptilian race. And he knew the reptilian race was the ones that was the murder of Abel all the way down to Zechariah. And they had mixed into that seed line. That's why. And he shall cause them to rule over many. Who's he going to cause to rule over many? The king of the south. The king of the north is going to cause the king of the south. Now, by the way, the king of the south, if you look at this in the Hebrew language, right? Melech Hanagiv. It's right here. Melech Hanagiv. All right? I'm going to change the color on that one there so you can see that good. All right? The, the only place the Negev Desert is at is in Jerusalem, excuse me, in Israel. So whoever is considered to be the king of Israel, whether it be Netanyahu or whoever it is, he, he, the king of the north, shall cause him to rule over many. Why? He's going to conquer the world for him. Remember what it says over here? Right? According to Messiah, will bring eternal peace, which of course was understood by the Israelites as peace for Israel, plus that which many fall extermination for all who did not enter into the conversion into the house of Jacob. Okay, I'm sorry, down here in the next part. All right, uh, conversion at the Messia Messianic period will be apparently on a great scale because all the nations of the world will gather about the King Messiah when he shall be manifested, seeing that these words of the scripture must be fulfilled. Uh, oh, that's still not the one. Uh, maybe I don't have it up. There's another one that I know about and I don't have it up here. I sure don't. Let me, let me just look and see. Let me just look and see. Maybe it's in here. Um... No, I don't think so. Yeah, there's actually one that speaks about a king that comes and conquers the entire world. That's a Zohar prophecy. All right? And this is why, and I meant to put that in there, and I guess I just got mixed up and did not bring that out. But anyway, he shall divide the land for a price. It's another one. King of the north. And you know, the Pope was always the guy working on this, dividing the land. He was the one behind the secret Oslo Accords, right? That was, uh, that was under Pope John Paul II. But Trump comes up, and now Trump does the division of the land. See, he shall cause them to rule over many which will be the king of the south. King of the north is going to cause the king of the south to rule over many. He, he shall acknowledge and shall increase in glory. Uh, that foreign God that he's going to increase in glory. And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push with him. So the king of the south pushes with him. And the king of the north shall come over him, as the way it should re read, him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. 
and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow as he passes through. And that's, that is country. All right? Countries, plural, right there. Baratzot. All right? It's not, this is not, Daniel 11 here is not, in verse 40, is not speaking about coming against Israel. It's coming, speaking about coming against all the countries around Israel. He shall enter also in the beauteous land, and many countries shall be overthrown, right? But these shall be delivered out of his hand, Edom, Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. And he shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. Now, when it says these will be delivered out of his hand, Edom, Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. I haven't had a chance really to look in this as, as of yet. I'm wondering if this could have something to do with Russia. I don't know. But he shall have power over the treasuries of gold and silver and over the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. The United States is the one that took down Egypt, Libya, and Ethiopia. And over the treasures of gold and silver are only over their natural resources. And the United States has overthrown those countries exactly for that reason. But tidings out of the east now the north shall frighten him. And let me tell you something. This one here has never meant more to me in all of my life when it comes, if you look at the United States, than when I had the, my own Pentagon, Pentagon source friend who advises the President of the United States call me and was very clearly concerned about us going to war with Iran because of China and Russia and what they'll do to this nation. And there's one thing I would love to tell you that he told me, but I promised him I wouldn't. But you can only imagine, let me put it to you this way, if you look at what I'm telling you that's going to happen here, you can only imagine what he said. You know, friends, in closing, let me just remind you, the scripture says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial, which is Satan? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel, an unbeliever? All right? I More than anybody, I long for my people to believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And I know that Jesus said, all that the Father has given me will come to me and none of them will be left out. But you know, even in the Romans, he says they are enemy for your sake. But they're beloved of the Father's sake. That's those that are blind. That's that Karite Jew that's blind, that really wants to believe, but he's just blind. Okay, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are a temple of the living God, and as God hath said, I dwell in them and will walk in them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. That's that day star. That's that light coming within you. Not a Zohar prophecy of some Nibiru planet coming along. Now, I'm not saying that this planet ain't going to come along. But like I said, they didn't tell you everything that went with it, did they? Wherefore, come out among them, and be you separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Right? And remember too what Amos said. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. That's why people are thirsty. But believe me, they'll give you water that's very unclean. If you want to stand where really what's true, join with us. Stand with us here. We don't, we're not the only ones that have truth. But we do our best to tell you the truth. And when we're wrong in things, we correct those things. We don't sit there and just make it like it's no big deal, make a mistake and continue to de deceive and, and move along. No, if we make a mistake, we tell you. We appreciate your stand. We appreciate your support of this ministry and we thank you for that. God bless you. Shabbat Shalom. And I trust that you will have a blessed rest this Sabbath. Erev Tov.